episode 22 of the GPP, Get to Performance Podcast, giving you knowledge, practical takeaways, and of course, the humor required to get through your day, but also to improve your general physical preparedness. Today's episode is exactly what you've come to expect from every other banger episode that we put out, which is going to be some deadly cinnamon. So cinnamon, pretty good put it in your coffee, put it in your baked goods, add some nice flavor to your oatmeal, but actually it's fucking killing you, according to a lady who knows nothing about anything, but positions herself as a nutrition expert. Love that. We're going to talk about cancer rates. We're going to talk about lifestyle modifications, the total cost on the U.S. taxpayer of something like cancer, And how much of that can be attributed to lifestyle modifications. And from a dollar standpoint, what that actually means for the greatest country in the galaxy, the United States of America. We're also going to talk about getting high before your workout. Some new ways to get increasingly high before your workout. A brand that I actually popped up on my explore page and I wanted to make fun of, but I kind of like now. We're going to talk about more quote-unquote healthy recipes that shouldn't exist. We're going to feature a couple feats of strength, some gym-related oopsies, and of course, a challenge that will hopefully, hopefully, win me a pair of those new rad runners. They're new runners, the white ones with the gold bottoms. Listen, my opinion on shoes in the CrossFit space specifically, I guess kind of in bodybuilding, but I'll speak more to the CrossFit space, is that people have way too many shoes. Um, But these rad runners that I was recently gifted, I didn't actually buy them. I was gifted them, so thank you. Um, I would like another pair, but the chance of me paying for that pair is zero. So I'm going to have to win these by winning this challenge. And like all challenges, obviously, I can win it. Today's episode sponsor is... Our 10% discount on all gifted academics preps. So this one is actually going out a little bit early. You're the first person, if you're listening to this, to get access to this. But we are running a 10% discount on all self-led preps. That brings the cost from $200 down to $180. That gets you an NSCA CSCS prep, Certified International Society of Sports Nutrition, the CISSN certification, or the CPT. We are currently in the process of putting together our tactical strength conditioning coach materials. You can look for those at the end of this year. How the math works out on the fact that we're giving you a discount and then that discount is sponsoring the show. Don't look into that. Don't read into that. Don't do the math on that. Just go and get yourself a discounted certification prep. As always, do the things that help us get this podcast out there. Rate it, review it, thumbs up, subscribe, watch it on multiple screens at once, send it to your friends, let your dog watch it. If you've got a bird, like a parrot, just play it for the parrot all day. Just put the GPP, you can cycle through the episodes, you can put this episode on repeat, just let that bird watch every single episode so that when you come home, they start talking like me. I can think of no better situation there what other stuff comments leave a comment comment back at your comment tag your friend in the comment all of that stuff subscribe to us on instagram or on youtube and then follow us all over on instagram as well gifted hq and gifted academics if you're looking for coaching we are the place to find it so go ahead and refer us out to your friends we appreciate those and of course go renew your coaching if you haven't done so already go sign up for Go sign up for 10 years with your coach, right? 10 years every day, you'll become better and better person because of that. Why not make a 10 year commitment to yourself? This week's big offering, we're repeating it from last week because I don't want you guys to miss out on this, is the fall retreat. No more RSVPs, none of that stuff. Go and sign up for the fall retreat. Uh, As of putting this episode out, whenever it does air, uh, on a Friday, of course, I just can't remember if it's this week or next week. Who knows? Uh, We may have to buy a new house or an an additional house on the same property for the retreat. So if you want to get in on that main house with everyone else, with all the cool kids, 
you're going to want to sign up now. No more RSVPs. No more I'll be there. No more I'm thinking about it. It's shit or get off the pot. Find your way to get yourself to North Carolina for the next gifted retreat, our fall foliage. And with that, we can dive right into the show. A cheers to you. A little bit of God's nectar, black coffee, unsweetened. I'm on a health kick, guys. I'm on a health kick. I am no longer sweetening my coffee. Life is bitter. The circumstances are li- of life are even more bitter. Your coffee should be the same. Nothing gets you ready for the disappointment of the day like the most bitter coffee you've ever had. So get like some low gr- Don't go to Starbucks. Get like some low grade Folgers. Put way too many grinds in there. Brew it way too strong and chug that down because everything from that moment on in your day will be significantly better. Life advice, cheers. That brings us into our favorite segment, the segment that I was like, Jake, I think we'll just throw in a couple of these, has taken over the entire show, and that is Memes and Things. (laughs) Memes and Things. Okay. The internet, I've said this a million times before, the internet works in a pendulum fashion, especially in health and fitness. That's the industry that I'm in. It could work this way and other, it could be like car repair could also work like this. Uh, you know, the pharmaceutical industry could, I, I don't know. I can just speak to the health and fitness industry. And that is the pendulum, right? Where things swing from one direction to the other. Now, over the past five to 10 years, I have only seen positive press on, this is so weird to say, positive press on cinnamon. Cinnamon is, uh, you know, it's an antioxidant. Uh, it scavenges free radicals. It is good for your skin. It's good for your nails. It's good for your hair. It's, uh, improves insulin sensitivity. All of that is good for you. It's a good thing for you. So that's the press that I've seen on cinnamon. All of that, throw it out. The research, the evidence, the anecdotal support, throw all that stuff out. Because cinnamon, little did you know, is actually murdering you. So I saw this one pop up on my Explore page from Healthy Emmy. Uh, So Healthy Emmy says, attention all cinnamon lovers. That's me. I love cinnamon. Especially when I'm dieting, when I'm in a fat loss phase, I need some calorie-free flavor. Cinnamon is great. Um, All right. Healthy Emmy says, as Instagram's self-proclaimed resident cinnamon expert, interesting thing to name yourself. Uh, Let me answer your questions. She's a nutritionist, but cinnamon is her love language. Why are those two things in opposition to each other? Oh, yeah, I'm a nutritionist too, but cinnamon is my love language. I feel like there's probably a lot of nutritionists that also like cinnamon. They're the same. They they can both exist. Nonetheless, let's get into a little Q&A before we watch the video here. All right, so what type of cinnamon is toxic and which type is safe? So cassia cinnamon can be toxic if consumed in large amounts due to its large or its high coumarin content. Keep that in mind. Keep that word right there. Coumarin, that ingredient, I would assume it's some sort of like bio compound flavonoid, some sort of thing that's inside cinnamon. Contains uh, Ceylon cinnamon is safer as it contains much lower levels of coumarin. How do you know which type you have? Check the label. If it specifies Ceylon, Kalon cinnamon, you have the safer type. The safer type. The fucking phrasing here is a joke. If it's a, if it just says cinnamon without further specification, it's likely cassia cinnamon. Oh no, I have cassia cinnamon. How much is okay? The tolerable daily intake for coumarin is 0.1 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. For an average adult, this translates to about one teaspoon of cassia cinnamon per day. One teaspoon. So one teaspoon is how many grams are there in one teaspoon? Uh, Let's see. One teaspoon in grams. That's what I thought. It's like seven grams. Wait. Six grams, five point, ooh, 69. Nice. Uh, one teaspoon, 5.69 grams. All right. 
So now that we know that, exceeding this regularly can cause liver damage. Exceeding this regularly can cause liver damage. Oh my god, am I going to die of a cinnamon overdose? If anyone would have died from day one, it's me, so it's unlikely to die. However, chronic consumption of high amounts of cassia cinnamon can lead to liver damage. Should you throw out the toxic one? Not necessarily, especially if you use it sparingly. It's generally safe. However, if you use cinnamon daily in large amounts, blah blah blah, potential risks of coumarin. Uh, which one would you, would you buy for regular use? You should buy the one that I say because it doesn't have the toxic stuff in there. If for occasional use, cassia cinnamon is fine in small amounts. All right, let's take a look at one teaspoon of cinnamon. Images. That's how much cinnamon you would need. What are you putting that much cinnamon in? Who's putting that much cinnamon in anything? Have you literally ever used cinnamon in your entire life? This is the amount of cinnamon that you would use in like 60 snickerdoodle cookies. It's too much cinnamon to just eat. This is more cinnamon than you would have in the cinnamon challenge. Can you put... I imagine that when this woman saw that people were doing the cinnamon challenge, she was shook, taken aback. I hope she was commenting on every single video and saying, oh, excuse me, is this cassia or Ceylon cinnamon that you're using? Because if it's not, and you do the cinnamon challenge every day for the rest of your life, you may have some negative symptoms of too much coumarin consumption. Fucking spare me. Spare me the insanity that is Instagram nutritionist content around stupid ingredients like this stupid flavonoids or sub compounds within stuff like this listen cutting through all of this nonsense it is impossible without actually trying without genuinely trying to do so it is impossible to consume this amount of cinnamon to where you would get any liver damage liver damage Lady, there are alcoholics out there that need help, that need genuine content around liver damage, avoiding that, working through their addiction, recovering from that addiction, and we're in, in, in steps to actually improve the function of their liver. And you're producing content about how cinnamon, if you eat a teaspoon of cinnamon every single day, maybe one day, you'll have liver damage. This obsession with single ingredients, single compounds, possible mechanisms of long-term damage is ridiculous. Yes, it gets an insane amount of views, an insane amount of likes, but it teaches people to obsess about things that do not matter. Fatty liver, cirrhosis of the liver as a result of an abundance of body fat and a sedentary lifestyle coupled with a poor diet will do 10 million times the damage to society that cinnamon will ever do. And you, a self-proclaimed registered dietitian, no, sorry, you're not a registered dietitian, you're a nutritionist, a nutritionist and a self-proclaimed cinnamon expert are spending your time debunking this. And when we scroll down, your first post is a slim on starch program. Teaching people how to cut out carbs in their diet. And that is the recipe. Healthy Emmy, you are a fraud. You are not helping people. You are teaching people to obsess over the wrong things. You are what is wrong with the industry. You can very easily change your ways, provide value to more. But if I had to guess, I would say that the Slim on Starch program is selling very well. Let's see a little bit more about it. As my client, you'll work with yourself, a team of three experts, Mindset coach, nutrition coach, who's apparently someone else, and healthy Emmy for weekly calls. Weird. Uh, program is if you want to lose weight, keep it off, make your relationship with your food simple. Yeah, nothing improves your relationship with food like telling people that a certain food is bad and they should feel bad for having it. 
that usually works out well. All right, Jake, uh, do me a favor on this one. Can you reverse image and search these and see if they're just pictures from the internet? This looks like AI. This top left one it looks like AI. The others, there's minimal difference. This lady, uh, middle right, just changed her lighting. Top right guy. Jake, these pictures have to be fake. Jake, do a little research. We might issue a public call out on uh, Healthy Emmy here, uh, our favorite cinnamon expert. So guys, take home here is that when you see content like this, either comment on it and say, this is garbage, you are garbage, the end, period, bye-bye. Or post it on your story and say, hey, listen, this isn't how things work. These people are obsessing over single ingredients. They're not drawing you know, enough attention to the actual issues that Americans are follow- that are that Americans are struggling with every single day. Uh, this type of content does nothing, and it usually moves us in the wrong direction. Emmy, you can do better. All right. Uh, next up is a little bit about cancer and modifiable, uh, risk factors in the United States and the citizens of this great country. Another one from my boy, uh, I think his name is Howard Luke's Lux. Forget how to say, I think I would, if I had to guess, I would say it's probably Luke's not Lux. So, uh, Dr. Luke's here posted about, uh, a study from the cancer, uh, cancer journal for clinicians, the American Cancer Society's journal, early look at some data out of the United States, modifiable risk factors, and what percent of those contribute to cancer. So if you're not in my group chat where I already posted this, um, guess what percent of cancer cases in the United States do you think are attributable to things that people can modify about their day-to-day life? You got your number? It's in mind. All right. Boom. 40%. So of the risk factors that the American Journal for Cancer considers modifiable, 40% of those are, you know, causing or potentially moving the needle when it comes to cancer cases. I think we know the big one here would be cigarette smoking. Moving down from that, we have excess body weight. Alcohol consumption, UV radiation, physical inactivity, HPV infection, modifiable, sure. Low fruit and vegetable intake, processed meats at 1%, low dietary fiber, 0.9, H. pylori, 0.7, red meat, 0.6, HCV, HIV, low dietary, sedentary behavior, all of that is on there as well. Um, So let's take a look at... Something that I wanted to look up. Uh, Let's see the cost of cancer in USA. All right. Cancer patients pay $16 billion out of pocket annually for cancer treatment. Newly approved cancer drugs cost an average of $283,000 annually. Increase of 53% in 2017. Uh, 12 12% to 62% of cancer survivors report being in debt because of their treatment. So we look at $16 billion annually out of pocket as a cost directly to the cancer patient. It's not really the number that I was looking for. More so looking on the amount that the United States spent on cancer care. $209 billion in the year 2020. I would assume that number is a touch higher now. This is a function of health in the United States continuing to decline. Cancer cases more than likely being on the rise. So if we take 40% of that, this $209 billion, that represents a $522 million. No, no. Math was not my strong suit there. All right, that's that's 209 million. Right, Jake? 209 million? So I need three more zeros on there. One, two, three. Two hundred and nine billion? Jake, if I mess up the math, just like cut this whole section out and redo the math. With some Jeopardy music on it. All right, point four. 40% of that, we are looking at $83.6 billion savings. Let's let's say over 10 years. 
What does that add up to over 10 years? $836 billion that we would save over 10 years by eliminating those modifiable risk factors. What's the debt? USA debt. U.S. national debt. What? You can't just like find it? All right. I, I'm going to just take this. National debt is $34.89 trillion. So even if we fixed some of the cancer costs, geez. Okay. I was expecting to post that and be like, oh, look, it can chip away at the debt. The U.S. national debt is much higher. But we can still save quite a bit of money by modifying these risk factors. Cigarette smoking being the biggest one. How do we fix that? Don't know, don't care. Not my space. Not my uh, not my area of expertise. What I would look at here is this excess body weight. This has to be a higher number now. It has to have moved up in the last five years. And then, of course, low fruit and vegetable intake and physical inactivity. So those right there alone are 10.7, 12.1, 12 12.1% of all risk of all cancer cases in the United States can be attributed to either excess body weight, physical activity, or low fruit and vegetable intake. Things that I and the team at Gifted can fix. Folks, we can do this. We can make a difference here. Overall, I just wanted to look at this data because I think it's super interesting in terms of I'm not sure that people uh, really know this. I feel like cancer is still kind of billed as like, oh, it's this random thing that just happens to you. Well, 40% of the time it happens to you because of lifestyle factors, things that are completely modifiable about your day to day life, uh, things that you could change and greatly decrease your risk of cancer. So if you are someone who has had a family member die of cancer, you know someone who has suffered with cancer, you know how you know how debilitating this is, not only to the individual, but their family, financially, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Um, so if we can get ahead of this as practitioners in the space or as people who are just passionate about our own health and fitness, spreading this message to others and decreasing their likelihood of getting cancer in their lifetime so they can then pass that message down to others, you absolutely can make a difference, not only for yourself, but for generations to come when it comes to something terrible like cancer. Interesting data here, though. I definitely wouldn't have put it at 40% modifiable. I would have said maybe like 20 to 25. So to see that this number is up at 40% in 2019 and possibly even higher now uh, is quite, quite surprising. Moving right along to an Instagram ad that I got. So I got an Instagram ad for this company right here. I don't know how to say the num off field. That's how I would say it. Like I can't imagine that it's said in any other way. This energy drink thing that they have here has OFF and then field underlined. Uh, they are associated in some way with Travis Pastrana. So it's like a running company. It's like running high. They're, they're playing off the like, oh, a running high. Why not actually get high when running? Best way to get the runners high since running shoes were invented. So marketing is solid here. I think, I think the marketing is good here. The ad that I got was, where is that ad that I got? It looked like the ones with the gummies in it. Ha ha. All right, there it is. Here's the ad that I got. All right, so we put the C in cardio. I don't know if that one really works. Like that doesn't, eh. I, I, that doesn't read very well to me. But nonetheless, we put the C in cardio, in THC, in CBD, in CBG, in carbs, in caffeine. All right. So I didn't know originally when I wrote my bit here, I'm going to stick with my bit. I didn't know that this was like a running high kind of thing or like a running supplement for running. It's okay. Not the best, not the worst. Um, you know, most of your beginners, I read this online. I did my research online. I did not, I do not condone the use of drugs. Uh, 10 milligrams of THC for most people does the trick. Uh, your more advanced users, 20, 30 is how they have a good time. You'll hear stories of people taking 60. 80, 100, and having a real bad time. But 
What I wanted to compare this to was, so the amount of caffeine that you need to improve your strength and power performance is roughly six to nine milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So if this wasn't a running supplement, you can get increased time to exhaustion. So for like running, cardio conditioning stuff at much lower dosages of caffeine. But to get an increase here in strength and power performance, the amount that you would need of these for someone who, let's just say 100 kilo male. Math is much easier for the 100 kilo male there. For that, you would need 600 to 900 milligrams of caffeine. Let's take the lower end of that, 600 milligrams. You could get that with 60 gummies uh, for a total of 360 grams of carbs. I'm assuming that's just straight sugar. So 600 milligrams of caffeine, 360 grams of sugar, and a whopping 100 milligrams of THC. The What you would feel like in that scenario with that amount of sugar THC and caffeine in your system, I can only imagine. It would be possibly a religious experience, possibly enough to make you never do drugs again. That's what I imagined when I first saw this supplement. Having it as a running, like you take it before you run, uh, you know, <laughs> if you ever want to laugh about like study design and methodology behind studies, just look up some of the studies from like the 70s and the 80s on the use of THC or smoking weed before exercise and time to exhaustion, the some of the study designs are like the most insane things. Like we had subjects uh, smoke three grams of marijuana bef- uh, through a wood pipe and then run to exhaustion. Yeah. And we noticed that their lung function decreased. It's like, yeah, it's because they just they like chiefed it down and then you put them on a treadmill I don't think that that research can be extrapolated out to this. So what some people will say, oh, you know, the utilizing marijuana before exercise decreases capacity as a decrease in lung function just because of the smoke and blah, 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 short term, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't think that could be the same here for a supplement like this that's being delivered orally, uh, ingested in, in edible format. So I would assume that this supplement has various effects based on your tolerance to THC as a whole. Uh, For people who very much enjoy getting high and uh, it's a big part of their life, I would say that they probably wouldn't notice much of a difference. Um, And I don't know enough about brain chemistry to say, okay, well, the increase in serotonin, dopamine as a result of THC acting on the pleasure centers desensitizes, you know, the body to the BDNF, the brain derived neuro, whatever factor that comes with running. So you would actually see a diminish of the runner's high. I don't know. I just think you'd probably just be high when you ran. Uh, if you're someone who trains uh, very specifically in certain zones, you just because of the lackadaisical, you know, getting distracted, some of the standard stuff that comes with uh, THC ingestion or smoking marijuana may throw you off your paces a little bit. Maybe struggle in terms of focusing, maybe focusing on your breathing. You may lose that, or it might heighten your senses to a point where it's easier for you to, you know, pay attention to those things. So I think your mileage will vary. Uh, If you take this stuff, please let me know your experience. Um, Take as much as you can, then run, and then call me. It's my open challenge to you. Don't do drugs. Disclaimer. All right. Let's move it right along. One ingestible item that I don't like to another. All right. So pizza. You guys know I'm not a big fan of pizza. Uh, Turning pizza into a health food is even stupider. If you're going to eat pizza, just eat some good pizza. Don't worry about making it healthy. Don't worry about putting weird shit in the crust. Don't put funky cheeses on it or anything like that. Just eat some pizza. This might be controversial to all my pizza heads out there. I don't know if pizza heads works. Like dead heads makes sense. Uh, you know, weed heads, you put weed in your head. That makes sense. Uh, um, pizza heads? I don't know. If you want pizza quick and somewhat healthy, here's my Greek yogurt-based dough. Why? Why are you putting Greek yogurt in dough? Just put normal ingredients in it. Make it taste good. Make it taste good. Like, okay, I got my pizza fix. Because what you do here is you put Greek yogurt in it, or you do what that other lady did. You make the whole crust out of cottage cheese, and it just tastes kind of not very good pizza-esque. And then you finish it, and you're like, man, I could go for some actual pizza right now. 
If you want pizza, eat a pizza. Move the rest of your macros and calories around the rest of the day to eat a normal ass pizza. But here's his recipe. One cup of flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, and then Greek yogurt. You're literally just replacing what would normally be the liquid component of your pizza dough with Greek yogurt. Just taking out the oil and the eggs and all that. Just putting in Greek yogurt. This isn't anything fancy here. And then you're baking it up and you're basically just getting, look at this. Spray your hands with olive oil and then ball up the dough. This isn't dough. There's nothing about that that's dough. You're going to make it flat and then you're going to bake it. Yeah, but it's not going to be dough. You can't even put the fucking ingredients on it, I bet. I haven't watched this video all the way through. I just got pissed and screenshotted it. Try and wrap. Like, who's looking at that? You know nothing else about this video. This is the screenshot that pops up. What is this guy making? I don't know. I wouldn't be able to tell you. Is he like laying concrete? Is he, you know, is that spackle for the wall? He punched a hole in the wall because he heard about someone making Greek yogurt pizza. Oh no, it's him. He's making. Slide it under and bake it. Yeah. So if you have to bake the crust before you put anything on it, then it's not actually crust. Because if you baked it all together, it would just bake all together into this big, mushy, gross disgustingness. Bake it for about 10 minutes so that it looks... Like, I don't know, burned egg whites. Put some other stuff on it. Guys, we're not going to watch anymore. Eat regular pizza. Don't eat pizza like this. Dave's Pizza Oven. I bet, look at this. Look at this other stuff that he makes. All of this pizza, and I'm not even a pizza guy, looks decent. Looks like a regular old, decent, tasty pizza. Dave's Pizza Oven. Don't make pizza with Greek yogurt. If you have to bake the crust, crust. Before you put anything on it, it's not real crust. Because it would hold up. It would hold up. You want the ingredients to meld together when it all cooks. Mixture of the flavors. Nope. This just tastes like what sort of feels like pizza on top of burned Greek yogurt. Tasty. Love it. All right. Moving right along. Feats of strength. I've been watching the Seek of Strength news show, and they've been putting some feats of strength on there, and I, I, I was appreciating that. This one I did not see featured. So, guys, this one. Our boy Ivan Makarov Strong in a collab post with Super Biceps. Both of these fantastic. All right, so it says world record, 160 kilos. How? How could this be a world record, 160 kilos? This guy's just going to bench press it. So down to his chest. And then sit up, strict press, back down, press, press, press. Yes. Guys, the internet, the internet was a great place when there were more videos like this. When Brad, like, I don't like the guy now. I think he posts a lot of cringe content. But when Bradley Martin was pause squatting 405 on uh, what those like roller sc- like hoverboard, I think that's what they were calling them hoverboard. When he was doing stuff like that, that's good. This content right here, this can cure, this can heal the Instagram fitness space. This can push, this can push all the bad stuff out, all the TikTok fitness broccoli head stuff at uh. You know, that that makes its way over to Instagram. Ivan Makarov can fix that. What do we even call this? All right. It's a bench. Like a bench sit-up. Strict prep. Like a, mil- a military bench sit-up. 160 kilo military bench sit-up. Let's see if... Hold on. Let me see if I can get a translation here. Let's see if he, what he calls it. Uh, world record. I will dry and pump you completely unlike... What the... F- I wish I hadn't translated this. I will dry and pump you completely under like... Unlike the undercoached ones in your gym. Cheating moderate burden for experienced and newcomers. What? What? I just wanted the name of the exercise, and now I've been dry-pumped completely, and I don't know how to feel. 
okay. He did not name the exercise. He wrote something that makes me feel very uncomfortable. And now I will see this face right here. Jake, zoom in, in my nightmares. I wanted this to be a wholesome, fun video. And now I feel like I've been violated. Impressive, nonetheless, the feats of strength. Another feat of strength here actually gone bad comes from Big Biob. Uh, I don't know what that means. But number one, I wanted to highlight this. This is, is not related. I wanted to highlight this transformation. Nasty. Nasty, nasty transformation right here. Very, very crazy. Is he in the best shape ever for a bodybuilder? No, not really. Kind of still looks like he's six to eight weeks out. But this is an insane transformation. Very impressive stuff. Uh, looks like... What the fuck is he eating? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What's being eaten here? Hot dog. Hot dog cauliflower pizza with ketchup packets? Mm. That's how you get jacked right there. All right. I think that's probably like, uh, this is what I used to eat. Now this is what I eat. Uh, this is the video that I wanted to highlight right here. I've never seen... Wait, is this it? Or is this it? No, this... that has to be... Ah, there it is. All right. I've never seen this happen before in a gym. And I'm not talking about knee wraps on a leg extension. I've seen that. Leg extensions. Is he... Oh, and he takes it to the head and it slices open his head. Insane. Is he even using the full stack? I don't even think he's using the full stack. Eh, it's probably close to the full stack. And he takes it with a smile. Dude, I saw this happen to a guy doing lap. So I think this had happened like lap pull downs. There's a funny little freeze frame right there. I've seen this happen to people doing like lap pull downs before. Um, and they bang themselves in the chest, maybe like low row and they hit themselves in the chest and their immediate impulse is like, to cry or to yell or to make a big deal. I'm suing this place. I'm going to fucking own this place. You guys are fucked. Blah, blah, blah. You'll be hearing from my lawyer. This guy it like laughs and smiles and is like rubbing blood all over his face. Guys, we can all be more like big bioob when stuff like this happens. So, you know, metaphor for life. When the leg extension machine breaks and it hits you in the face, do it with a smile. Rub blood all over yourself. Do you think this guy wiped down the equipment when he was done? Probably not. Look at the rust on this. Any comments in English? Nope. All Spanish. Never seen that one before, but definitely wanted to include that. All right. Something that I also hadn't seen before. Nico Sully came to me uh, on my explore page here, uh, posting a challenge that I believe was started by this Winnes, Wins World, Win, Winnes World, probably Wins World, like a Win, Wayne's World kind of thing. And that is the 301 test. I want you guys to know, or the 301 test. I want you guys to know that not only will I smash Nico Sully's time, but I will also beat Winnis World's time. And I will post Rad Global in it because I think they sponsor Winnis World, Wins World, um, and they will send me a pair of free shoes. So the 301 test is four time, 100 back squats, 100 bench press, 100 deadlifts, and a one mile run with your body weight on the bar. So you just round up. So for me, I'm around 205. So I'll just put 205 on the bar. It might be like 206, 207 the day of the test. So I'll round that up to 210. 100 back squats, 100 bed press, 100 deadlifts, and a one mile run all for time. Uh, I want to say that ne yeah, Nico Sully wants to do it in under an hour. I think Nick Sullivan is his name. Wanted to do it in under an hour. Winds World did it in 47 minutes. Um, so I would say the back squats... The back squats, I would start with a set of 25 and then do 20, 15, and then 10s from there. Um, and I would monster mash those a lot faster than he's working through. Seems to be taking pretty long rests between. Stimulus on that is probably similar to like 150 heavy wall balls. 100 bench press for time with body weight. I would definitely do this in sets of 8 to 10. This is the section that would 100% be the hardest for me. Um, possibly doing even sets of like six to eight 
uh, just so I can keep my cycle rate high. And then last but not least is going to be the deadlifts, 100 reps at 205, 210 on deadlift. Uh, kind of depends how my legs feel after the squats. I would assume my legs would recover pretty quickly through the bench press. So on deadlifts, I think I could do that in like a 40, 30, 30 or a 40, 30, 20, 10, um, just so that last set of deadlifts isn't super large and I'm not carrying a bunch of fatigue, um, out into the run. The run pace for me, I think would be probably recovery ish. Not super thresholdy on the first 800 meters or the first 400 meters, um, and then start really accelerating from there. So if I had to predict my time on something like this, I think the hunt. Oh, he did it on an air runner too. So that's actually a little bit harder. So I'll have to do that on an air runner to mimic that. Oh, he's walking. That's crazy. Um, let's see what Wins World's time was. I think he's got it. Posted it not too long ago, I don't think. Oh, this guy's a CrossFitter? I didn't know this guy was a CrossFitter. Thought he just did hybrid stuff. Week 26, week 27. Three, there it is. Week 28, the 301 test. Finished his squats. In a, this is the time to beat. Honestly, I think this guy's more in line with... This is the stupidest comment ever. I'm confused as to why it took you 47 minutes to do a mile, or am I missing something? You're literally missing the entire workout. Everything. Oh. Hey, Rob Foster did it in 38 minutes and 34 seconds, sub 40. She. All right. Had an issue. He said after the deadlifts, he had an issue and spent way too long transitioning. Uh, do you think he shit his pants? Probably shit his pants. I think that's what that translates into. All right. So for me, the 100 squats, uh, sub 10 for sure. Very easy to hold 12 per minute here. Uh, the bench, I would say 10 minutes. I would like to have the first three done in under 30 minutes. So the squats, I'm just going to let's play because this is a really weird way to freeze that. Um, squats, 9 to 9.30-ish. Uh, bench, bench for me is going to take the most time. And I'm a pretty good bencher relative to most hybrid athletes. Uh, so that'll probably take me up until the 22, 23 minute mark deadlifts, a hundred deadlifts at two Oh, uh, at two Oh five soups. That's, that's a joke for me. I could, if I really, really wanted to hurt myself, uh, I could probably do that unbroken. And then the run from there, probably 7.30-ish, sub 7.30, maybe 7.15-ish. So coming in around probably the 38 to 39 minute mark, I think I can, I think just looking at this, you know, obviously it could go terribly wrong. I think that I could smack this time. Uh, we got a 38.34 in the comments. I don't, I don't know if I can beat that. I don't want to like that comment. 47.38, not bad. 59.13. Uh, 38.27. 37.26, that's quick. Adam Klink would destroy this test. Adam Klink would massacre this. All right. I want to beat the guy who has 100,000 followers, 200,000 followers. 47.56 is the time. Uh, I'm probably going to do this like next week. So uh, next episode of the podcast, I will tell you guys how the 301 challenge went. Looks fun. Looks fun. Looks like a good workout. Uh, good metabolic challenge there. Things that I'm pretty good at barbell and running. So could be fun. I might convince uh, I might convince Steve, Mr. Clegg himself to join me on this one. I might just recruit the entire team Strenflex uh, and we'll post our scores next week. I don't think Alicia will do it just because her knee is bummed. Maybe we can find her an alternative for squatting. All right. That takes us out of memes and things over to a post that uh, Miss Carolyn B made this week. So Carolyn 
You guys all know she is our endurance specialist, but she is also a new mom navigating into the world of training, nutrition, and all of that postpartum. So Carolyn did us all the favor of starting a program that we have had our sights set on at Gifted for quite some time, which is Mama Strong. This is a $20 a month early bird. I believe the price is now $30 a month. Uh, community, you get a training program to follow, and you get direct access to Carolyn for all of your questions, comments, concerns, and needs. So Carolyn did a really good job of defining what Mama Strong means to her and how you can take advantage of that. I think that as someone who is a relatively new dad, you know, bearing witness to my uh, beautiful wife and my baby mama, Miss Jimmy herself, you know, I think getting back to training postpartum is something that should be a priority for most moms. And that's a message that gets put out there a lot. But at the same time, how to actually go about that and make it fit the massive overhaul, the massive change that your life just saw can be quite challenging for people. So having someone who is currently going through it, has done it, has gone through it before, has experienced these things and kind of can meet you where you're at is incredibly important to avoid the frustration that can come with that. So we can't recommend not only because it's a product that, you know, we offer at gifted, but we can't recommend enough joining mama strong. If you are a new mom, uh, who wants some training resources, some nutritional help, and maybe just someone to talk to about your training, about your nutrition, about your goals in this postpartum period, things change rapidly, often from day to day. Having someone to go through it with can alleviate a lot of the anxiety and stress that you go through in this, you know, postpartum period where things have changed quite a bit from what you were used to. So can't recommend Mama Strong enough. Which moves us into our final piece of the day, our segment that we always finish with, which is our Reddit question. Oh, wait, no, Jake, hold on, hold on, pause, time out, full time out. No, is that hat full? That's full time out basketball, not 20 second, 30 second, 20 second, full time out, full time out. That's what I want. Uh, Jake, AI song for the week. I would like you to tell the AI to make us a song that was written by Grammy nominated two chains, uh, but it needs to be like kids bop style and it needs to be about the importance of eating your fruits and vegetables. So that's two chains, kids bop importance of eating your fruits and vegetables they're getting more challenging aren't they let it rip it's two chains let's get throw it back to high chill stay late right now i will got a bag of greens it's kale spinach lettuce yeah you know what i mean vitamin game strong immune system topics or if you said berries keep the doctor dropping Fruit and veggie flats keep my body fresh. Healthy living daily crowd, we do it the best. Apples and bananas keep my mind in check. Veggie power food gang, yeah, we stay blessed. Carrots for my vision, keep my eyes on point. Broccoli for the muscle, yeah, we run this joint. Stew berries for the bright, staying sharp all day. Peppers for the flavor, keep my diet on sweat. Fruit and veggie flats keep my body fresh. Healthy living daily crowd, we do it the best. Apples and bananas keep my mind in check. Veggie power fruit gang, yeah, we stay blessed. Tourists for my vision, keep my eyes on point. Broccoli for the muscle, yeah, we run this joint. Go berries for the brain, stay a sharp off bay. Peppers for the flavor, keep my diet on sweat. Fruit and veggie flats keep my body fresh. Healthy living daily crowd, we do it the best. Apples and bananas keep my mind in check. Veggie power fruit game, yeah, we stay blessed. Tomatoes for the heartbeat, stay steady. Fiber from the veggies keep my system ready. Nutrients on lock, energy on max. Living clean, eating green, that's the facts. Dying apple mango, flavor so sweet. Grapes in my smoothie, can't be beat. Zucchini, eggplant, color so bright. Eating all the veggies. Feel so right. Fruit and veggie flex, keep my body fresh. Healthy living daily crowd, we do it the best. Apples and bananas, keep my mind in check. Veggie power fruit game, yeah, we stay blessed. So stack your plate high with that healthy pride. 
fruit and veggie flex, let it be your guide. Strong body, sharp mind, living our best. Fruit and veggie flex, we passed the test. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I don't get to listen to these until the episode comes out or right before the episode comes out. So I just have to imagine it in my head. And that one, I bet, was fantastic. Oh, crap, guys, I missed one. Hold on. Let's go back up to memes and things for a very, very brief second here. Uh, talked about that. Talked about that. Talked about that. Talked about that. This one, I changed my mind. This one is a teaser for next week. Reminder that if you're not hungry in the morning when you first wake up, this is a sign from your body that there might be metabolic adaptation, aka your metabolism is slow, and it will cause you to gain weight and make it really hard to lose belly fat. Hashtag cortisol imbalance. I'm going to put this in next week's episode. I don't have enough time left to do the requisite amount of yelling required to work through this. So, Michaela Riley, nutritionist, not dietitian, guys. Remember, not dietitian, nutritionist, coming back for you next week. All right, here it is, our Reddit question for the week. This didn't even come from Reddit. I think Jake took this from the other website, Quora. I think that's the name of the other one, not Reddit, where you can ask your silly questions and more times than not get silly answers. All right, so this question is from that guy, 157849272294. I guess one that guy, 1578. 4927293 was already taken. Uh, that guy says, I plan on making my own baby food for my son. Good. Glad he's not making it for himself. In the coming month or so, he's a five month old. What is the healthiest foods I can make for him? Any foods I should avoid? Any tips and tricks? So, early on, you obviously want to avoid things that are unpasteurized. That's why they tell you no honey, no tr- unpasteurized fruit juices, no raw milk, or anything like that. Just because the immune system is developing and fighting off potential, you know, bacteria that could be found in those foods can be dangerous. So obviously avoid stuff like that. But there seems to be this misnomer, this understanding that like, or this misunderstanding that babies need something other than what adults need if they are trying to grow and be healthy. The portion sizes change because it's a tiny human, not a grown human. But you can follow pretty similar nutritional guidelines to what you would for an adult. And I think the biggest one that people miss when they're feeding their kids the jars of shit, slop, disgusting, blended nastiness is that babies are growing faster than at any point in their entire life. The building blocks upon which that growth will be made are amino acids. Amino acids are directly available in the diet in the form of protein. When you feed, when you feed your kid blended up pears, blended up sweet potatoes, blended up so-and-so whatever, you're leaving the baby with a deficiency of protein. So the same protein recommendations that you would give an adult are perfectly fine here. So again, I wouldn't like if you have a baby that has shown the family history of like kidney disease or like I, I wouldn't do like two, four grams of protein per pound of body weight. But like 0.8, the normal recommendations, 0.8 to one gram of pound or of protein per pound of body weight, still perfectly fine here for the baby as well. I'm aware of no literature. Again, the grain of salt could be wrong. Shooting from the hip here. But I'm aware of no research that shows that babies are unable to you know, digest, absorb, utilize that amount of protein, or that that amount of protein is actually bad for their health. So you got a five month and old in front of you. My wife's going to yell at me because I forget what people weighed when he was five months, but probably like 12 or 13 pounds over 13 grams of protein, maybe a little bit more just to be safe. That's the biggest thing that I notice from the baby food industry or just from people feeding their babies in general is that it's like, this super ultra processed carbohydrates with no high quality proteins, whatever. Well, he drinks formula. It's like, it's 
okay, there's some protein in formula in the form of like whey protein that's added to that. But the Peepo Man, who so far, knock on wood, not jinxing things, has grown to be a smart, handsome, and muscular fellow. He had his first bite of whole food at five months old, five or six months old or so. You know what it was? It was 93.7 ground beef, baby. That boy is ground beef made. Beef fed. He's not corn fed. He's beef fed. So I think if you're trying to blend stuff up here, I would blend up. I would quite literally, I would blend like protein sources into that food. So if you're like pasteurize it or like if you're pureeing sweet potatoes and fruits and vegetables and all that just to make it easier to eat. Um, good amount of research that Jimmy has shown me about like letting your baby like play with their food and like play with food in general and how that, you know, decreases food aversions. But that's more her topic than mine. But I would blend in protein sources here. So you're blending up some sweet potatoes, blend in some ground beef. You're blending up some fruits, blend in some chicken, blending up some, I don't know, vegetables blend in a little bit of fish as well so make sure you're checking with your pediatrician of course there's my disclaimer but blending in protein sources to make sure that the baby has enough protein there will never come a time in their life where they are laying down more tissue building more of their body protein and amino acids being the building blocks for that i think tips would be to not really follow the traditional baby food of just ultra processed carbohydrates putting some healthy fats in there for brain growth and brain function, your omega threes, not so much your omega sixes, but your omega threes, specifically DHA and EPA, so fatty fish, fantastic food for growing babies, protein, and those fatty acids on top of, of course, the protein that we talked about. Does your baby need to be, ch- uh, you know, chugging whey protein shakes? No, absolutely not. Uh, could you mix in a little bit of fair life milk to bump up the protein content of their milk, get them a little bit more calories. Of course, the whole milk variation, of course, that is good as well. All right. Disclaimer again, check with your pediatrician. Don't listen to me. I'm a guy on a podcast. Please don't feed your baby because squad father said, this is what you're supposed to feed your baby. That could be a mistake or as with most cases, I could be a hundred percent correct as that seems to be the norm around here. That concludes things. That wraps us up. That is episode 22 in the books. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have suggestions for future episodes, or if you have content that you think that I should cover on the podcast, I'm getting more and more of that as the days and weeks go along, which is very helpful. I'd love to crowdsource stuff. Not only does that make my job easier in terms of the screenshots that I have on my phone, but it also keeps the content relevant to things that you like and that you want to hear about. Please, send those over my way. We'll see you on the next episode. In the meantime, in between times, and always, 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 number one, believe in yourself, but number two, stay gifted.